In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a skybox in Blender as is commonly used in video games, more so in older ones, but it's still a really good trick to have if you're an indie or solo. And you can also use it for your own Blender renders to actually light things and speed things up a whole lot too. So without further ado, let's jump into this. We've got an empty Blender scene here. I'm just going to select everything and delete it. That's A and X. I'm going to press Shift A and add in a camera, Alt R to reset the rotation and then R X to lock to rotate and lock on rotation. And then I'm going to type in 90 to get our camera pointing forward on the Y axis. Now, a very crucial thing here is you need to make sure that your render engine is set to cycle. So this will not work in Eevee. It's a bit of a bummer, but that's just how it goes. Now we're going to go to our camera properties and we're going to change the type from perspective to panoramic. And we're going to change it from fisheye equisolid, equisolid, uh, to equirectangular. And we're going to press GZ. We're going to lift it up a little bit. And just for demonstration purposes, like let's say you want to do a uh, space scene, right? You'll probably do something like this. Uh, for to really demonstrate, I'm going to put it behind the camera. We're going to go to the view camera, rendered, and now you'll see that it shows up towards the sides there. And that's mostly it, but I want to show you a really, really cheap and easy trick to make really good skyboxes with very little effort. So go to World Properties, go to Color, and select Sky Texture. And this creates a procedural sky texture in Blender, and you can change all different settings on this. So for starters, you can change your sun elevation to, let's say, 50. You can change the rotation to 90, so now the sun's coming from over there. I'll set it to 40. We've got a little, you know, side thing going on there. Um, you can change how much air is in the atmosphere, right? So that'll make the light scatter through differently. You can adjust the altitude. So the higher and higher and higher that altitude goes, the, uh, the thinner the atmosphere is going to appear and a bit more. It's going to be a different shade. Uh, you can adjust the ozone and the dust and the air again. Um, let's undo all of those. And you can also, of course, change the sun's size and its intensity. And uh, something I like to do with this actually is because its values are really, really high to start, I'll often change this to 0 0.1 strength. And that usually works pretty well. Otherwise, you would have to go to your render properties um, and under color management, you could also change your exposure level. So you'll see if I put the exposure to, you know, negative one, and then we put the strength back up, uh, we could go to negative 10, ooh, that's a little too far. Negative uh, four or so is a bit closer to just having it be less bright from the start. So just to, avoid a little bit of fiddling with exposure values and stuff. I usually just put the strength at 0 0.1 and then I get a nice good look like that. Now, uh, from here, you often will want in your game some kind of like ground plane. Uh, for a good skybox, it should generally be really flat near where the camera is. And then you'll have, uh, you know, mountains and stuff in, in the distance, right? So just super duper quick, um, let me just add a subdivision surface. I'm gonna set it to simple. I'm gonna crank those levels up to six. Make sure to do it in the render too, cause we are gonna be doing this as a render eventually. And then I'm going to go to uh, add a displace modifier. We'll do a new texture and you can find all sorts of height maps online. There's also like height map generators. You can also do this procedurally with noise functions and stuff. I'm just going to try to remember. Let me see. There's, there's probably, um, yeah, here's some free ones I got off of, and I can't preview them, uh, that I got off of ArtStation a long time ago. Now, obviously, that is a pretty extreme look there so let's uh actually let's 
apply the scale to this really quick and then all of a sudden that's not extreme at all um and we need to make sure that we're using uv coordinates too or it's going to kind of be funky let's see set that to mm, let's also apply our initial subdivision surface there and i'm just going to add another one and let's see we'll crank that up to five with the five again and then we're getting this is already much much better looking um let's, let's go all the way to six because this is a pretty high resolution texture so we can kind of really get away with this actually um and then i'm going to just scale this to be absolutely massive and i'm gonna bring it up so that the camera is there and i'm gonna shift it so that we're kind of in the center of this right and we're gonna need to go to our camera and change the clipping distance um so let's just make that say 10,000, and then if we go back to our render preview mode we'll see that updated now you don't want to well you you might want to have <laughs> a totally white landscape i don't know uh you you do you uh be creative with it okay so i want to address two really common problems you might have with this really quick um you might well first off you might struggle actually seeing the scene uh and what i do and i forget to mention sometimes is i have by default i've got it set up so that in the end panel my view is set to 10,000 meters as far distance so if you're not able to see anything i think the default blender ships with is usually like a thousand or something just crank that up and you should be able to see the full terrain but also you're gonna probably notice uh dudes like this at the corner that are totally cramping your style so what do we do about that well we just go to the uv editor and we select all the faces and we scale them down just ever so slightly you'll notice that the uv window doesn't have a huge view distance um but once we turn that up then you'll see that the sides are okay so when previewing what this skybox is actually going to look like, I recommend not doing it in the camera because obviously the camera distorts things a whole bunch and that kind of, you know, is going to affect it. Um, I'll just walk you through what I did for this really quick material setup. First off, I've got a geometry node and then I'm getting the normal, doing a separate XYZ and then I use a color ramp that's uh, very, very strict on it to kind of make a mask out of that. You can see we could swap it around like so. And then that's controlling a mix shader, which just has these two shaders I set up that are just principled BSDFs. And they just have uh, some textures from Polyhaven all plugged in properly. The only special thing going on here is I just tossed in a mix node with a noise texture to mess up the UV map a little bit so that you don't get the straight grid tiling. There are seamless textures, but you'll notice patterns. So, um, and you can do better with that. You can mix more and different nodes and stuff in to make it a lot better. But this is just a super quick setup for the video. I'm doing the same thing for the other one over here too, of course. And, go into the view camera and you'll see we've got a sky box and all we have to do at this point is render it out and then we can put it in a game or use it in blender uh don't forget to set your render resolution really high i'm going a little bit lower because it's a tutorial i just want to do this fast but maybe go with something like 8k by 4k once it's finished rendering go to image and save and then you probably want to save it as something like uh, that's pretty lossless, maybe a .hdr. Uh, yeah, we'll just go with a .hdr because those tend to have like really high, uh, they're, they're good at preserving luminosity values and stuff. And so we'll just name this skybox tutorial.hdr. I'm pretty sure .hdr works in Unity. If not, you can just save another version as a PNG. 
Um, in fact, just to get ahead of compatibility issues, we'll just save a ping version as well. With the render finished and saved, we'll jump over to our Unity project and we can just drag and drop it into our textures folder. It'll take a second to import. We'll go ahead and uh, in our materials folder, we'll create a new material by right clicking, selecting material. We're gonna name this Desert Skybox, but you can name it whatever skybox you made. And in our shader, we're going to change this to Skybox Panoramic. And then we can select our texture here to put in there. And then we press Control 9 to open up the lighting window. And then we go to the Environment tab. If you remapped that for some reason, if it's not working, just go to Window, Rendering, Lighting. Then for our Skybox material, we're going to put in Desert Skybox. And you're going to notice right away that two things. Uh, one, it's extremely overexposed and it's also very blurry, which, you know, we didn't render this, you know, at 8K, which would probably be ideal, but it shouldn't be this blurry at 4K by 2K, right? So we're going to go to uh, our exposure in the skybox material and we're just going to bring that down a little bit. We'll go to 0.55 seems fine. And we're also going to our textures. We're going to select skybox tutorial. Now I'm going to fix both things at once here. You'll notice there's this horrible seam there as well. So I'm going to fix the blurriness and the seam. To fix the blurriness, turn off generate map. Uh, or sorry, to fix the seam, turn off generate mip map. And then to fix the blurriness, you want to change your max size to something higher like 4K in this instance or 8K if it is that high resolution and apply. And you'll notice it's much less blurry now and it is there's no ugly seam anymore. And there you go. That is our skybox. And here's we go you can see it works just fine in the scene view we've got our whole 360 panoramic um one thing i didn't mention uh is you will want to move and rotate your directional light so that it lines up with the sky from the sky box uh, i already did that because i've re-recorded this uh, a couple of times and th there you have it um I've used this technique for all sorts of games and I'll edit in some photos of that. And uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you make something cool. I hope you learned something and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye bye.